Four more cities across North America have expressed an interest in joining the Rugby Football League in the coming years as the game's transatlantic interest continues to grow, the RFL chief executive, Nigel Wood, told The Guardian. Wood would not reveal the locations of the parties interested in following Toronto Wolfpack and entering the British leagues, but said there were a number of keen parties in the US and Canada. With Toronto earning promotion to the championship in their debut season this year, Rugby League is seemingly keen to build on that and strengthen its grip on the North American rugby market. Aside from New York have lodged a proposal to join the RFL in 2019 and, with the World Cup to be held in North America in 2025, Wood said more expressions of interest are welcome. It would be inappropriate for me to name names, but there are three other proposals in the United States, and one more in Canada, on the table, he said. We've got to make sure it works for British Rugby League as well as World Rugby League, but there's nothing happening now that would dissuade you from having a look at some other opportunities. Another indicator of the RFL's intention to move into the North American market is a proposed test between England and New Zealand in Denver next June. That game, however, faces resistance from Australia's National Rugby League, with some of its clubs concerned about the logistics behind releasing their players to play a one-off test in the U.S. Wood is adamant the positives of the idea outweigh the negatives, hinting that only the NRL could stop the test from happening. Our position is clear, Wood said. The RFL and England are very supportive of that game going ahead, without a doubt. The players have been unanimous in their support for it too and it's beholden upon the international community to keep the momentum of the World Cup going. Events like that are a logical step. We'd love it to happen, and while we recognize there are challenges in terms of player travel and making sure they're right to play in the next round of domestic competition, we think it can reach a positive conclusion. It's a terrific initiative, and the fact our players are behind it proves the point. When asked if he felt it would happen, he said that's the hope, but it's not nailed on at the moment. Who will coach England in that game also remains in some doubt. Wood said discussions have not yet taken place with Wayne Bennett over whether he will continue in the role. The 67-year-old is now out of contract after guiding England to the World Cup final this month, but Wood hinted the RFL will not simply hand Bennett a new deal should he wish to carry on. It's a mutual decision between both parties. Nobody is in a rush to sit down in a formal environment. I think we need to let Christmas come and go first. In the new year, we'll see where we are. When the consortium behind the New York proposal, headed by the Yorkshire-based businessman Ricky Wilby, was made public it was hoped a decision would be made on their acceptance into the league before the end of this year. Wood, however, says that will not be the case. I think there's a bit of work to be done in the first quarter of 2018. Subject to that, there's then some due diligence and investigating to be done. Well look at it then. Report to the RFL board in March, and then based upon that well decide whether it's credible enough to present to the clubs after that. Wood also indicated that a decision on what a potential league restructure may look like in this country from 2019 onwards is expected around the time the 2018 season begins in February. The important thing is that before you kick a ball in 2018, you've got to know what the consequences are. The next club meetings are in February and I can't imagine it will go beyond that, he said. One matter on which Wood was far less clear, however, was his own future. Speculation is rife within the sport that, after 10 years as the RFL chief executive, he may leave to take the soon-to-be-vacated role as CEO of the Rugby League International Federation when David Collier departs in May. When asked if he had applied for the role, he said that's not a fair question to ask. David does a terrific job. Wood was then reminded that Collier has agreed to step down. That's his decision, Wood said. I'm a great supporter of international rugby but I don't think I should say any more than that.